until the music stops and the graphic, that neat graphic, uh, I'm not sure if Ben did that or Danny did that. Ben did that. I'm, I'm impressed with that graphic every, every time I see it. Well, hey, welcome, folks. We are glad to have you uh, in the house of the Lord this morning, uh, welcoming uh, regular attenders, welcoming guests this morning. If you're, if you're new with us or haven't been coming very long or if you're online, uh, we're just glad you're here. And it's just a joy to come before uh, before the altar of God. We're going to sing about uh, uh, coming before the altar this morning, I believe, on one of the songs. But hey, we're just going to get going in with it this morning. So if you can, if you'd like to stay with, stand with us, please, uh, please do that. We're going to sing. This is amazing grace. breaks the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the holder with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in all in wonder the king of glory the king above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. If you would lay down your life. That I would be I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory. Who rules the nations with truth and justice? Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. The king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free, oh Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me. Join these people across the world with these words from Psalm 47. Come, everyone, clap your hands, shout to God with joyful praise. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is the great King of all the earth.
my sorrow and dead in my sin, lost without hope, no place to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested and my life began, ash was redeemed, only beauty remained. My orphan heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested, and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes all
chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom faithfully born. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested, my life began. Washes over me. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new. Now life begins with you. displayed on a criminal's cross darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost but then Jesus arose without freedom in hand that's when death was arrested my life began oh your Amen out of that. <laughs> that freedom that we have. It's so wonderful. By grace alone, somehow I stand. Where even angels fear to tread. Invited by redeeming.
starting to sweat. I, I wish I was wearing a dress like my son over there. <laughs> Not, no, it, it's called a, it's called a longi and he is wearing shorts underneath. So um, we're going to read some scripture. This is from Exodus 34, where God I- identifies himself as a God of mercy and grace. Then the Lord came down in a cloud and stood there with him. And he called out his own name, Yahweh. The Lord passed in front of Moses, calling out Yahweh, the Lord, the God of compassion and mercy. I am slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. That is the God that we serve. I'm going to, if you bow with me, I'm going to pray for our offering. Lord, what a morning. What a morning to praise you. What a morning to give thanks to you, to recognize your authority in our, in our lives. That, that you, are our, you are our bridegroom. You are the one that we live for. Lord, I just thank you so much for everything you've given us. I just thank you, uh, thank you for the, the monetary gifts and that you would bless whatever we give and you just multiply it and use it for whatever you want. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound
the triplet. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> It is a joy to get to sing and worship with all of you this morning. Uh, my name is Kayla. I'm the family pastor here at Cornerstone. And today I have just a few announcements for us about things that are going on in the life of our church family. So we wanted to let you know a chance for connection, exercise, and worshiping and learning about God together um, will be happening as Danny Maxson and some other instructors from Revelation Wellness are going to be hosting RevFit classes. Those will be on Wednesday mornings from 6.10 to 7 a.m. for the next six weeks. So set your alarm early. Come on out. It'll be a great way to start the day. Um, this is a class that's just for women. So women, set your alarm early. Come on out. It'll be a great day. Um, we also wanted to let you know we're updating our church directory as a way for us all to be able to keep in touch with one another. We have a copy for you in the foyer. If you could just double check that, if you're someone that is already part of our church directory, make sure all your information is correct. And this is the last week we'll be doing that. So make sure and get that done today. Um, and then we wanted to let you know about a Bible study and fellowship opportunity that's coming up. It is called the Secret Church Study of the Book of Ruth. It's going to happen on April 19th here at the church. Brian Hart and, and Renee will be hosting that. Um, it's going to start at 6 p.m. It'll be in the sanctuary. And the story of the Book of Ruth reminds us that our lives are part of something that's much larger than ourselves. So you can um, call our church office if that's something that interests you, that you'd like to be part of. Uh, you can also connect with Brian Hart directly about that. So I wanted to let you all know that it is time for our kids to go to your kids' worship. If you are in kindergarten through fifth grade, you can meet Miss Danny back in the foyer. And I hope that you all have a great time in kids' worship today. Yeah, it's that week. <laughs> For sure! My goodness. So, you guys know that it's been that kind of a week. But it has been a good week. It has been good and meaningful and, and spirit-filled and God-filled. And, and we trust in God's goodness even when we're not in control. Especially when we're not in control. And uh, yeah, something else happened and we're going to go with that instead because we trust that God is at work. So I am going to invite you to open your scriptures with me, open your Bibles. Uh, we have been in Galatians, the book of Galatians. Uh, we've been in this book of Galatians last week, this week. We were going to be a little further in chapter 2 this upcoming week. I am still going to preach that sermon, probably next week is my guess. But, but again, something beautiful came up. And we trust in God. And so we're going to go with that. Uh, we've been in the study of Galatians. And the big point of Galatians is that there's been, the, the gospel has been declared to people. 
and there are some other people come in, they, they start preaching another gospel. That's what we talked about last week, right? The, the good news about Jesus, that's what the gospel is. The good news about Jesus has been declared, and then some other people came in and started preaching something else. They said, yeah, no, you had to follow the Old Testament laws. You had to do this. You had to do that. You have to do all these other things, otherwise you're not a real Jesus person. Otherwise, God is not going to care about you. And so with all that in mind, I want to send us to Galatians 2, uh, verse 6. And I'm going to read it here off the screen. Galatians 2, starting at verse 6. And the leaders of the church, this is Paul speaking, and the leaders of the church had nothing to add to what I was preaching. By the way, their reputation as great leaders made no difference to me, for God has no favorites. Instead, they saw that God had given me the responsibility of preaching the gospel to the Gentiles, just as he had given Peter the responsibility of preaching to the Jews. For the same God who worked through Peter as the apostle to the Jews also worked through me as an apostle to the Gentiles. In fact, James, Peter, and John, who are known as pillars of the church, recognized the gift God had given me. And they accepted Barnabas and me as their co-workers. They encouraged us to keep preaching to the Gentiles while they continued their work with the Jews. Their only suggestion was that we keep on helping the poor, which I have always been eager to do. That is out of Galatians chapter 2. What I love about this passage is that Peter, founder of the church, uh, like the kind of the, the lead disciple after Jesus left, the lead disciple and then lead apostle, Peter has been leading the charge to help get the word out there to his Jewish brothers and sisters that Jesus is the way, that Jesus is the Messiah, and he has been leading that charge. That has his, been his gifting. That's how he was raised. That's where he was moving. That was who his mission was to. But Peter recognized Paul, this apostle, this person that was called by God to do something for, for the Gentiles. And, and that's my Sorry, I, I am a Gentile. If you are a non-Jewish person, you are considered a, a Gentile. Gentile just it means non-Jewish person. And so we, those of us that aren't Jewish, we are Paul's legacy. We are the legacy of, of this decision, of this blessing, of the good news coming, not just to Jewish people, but also to the rest of the world, that the good news of Jesus is for everyone. Peter had his mission does not mean that Peter's mission was wrong. That doesn't mean that Peter's mission was not good and beautiful and just and God-honoring. Jesus had, or Paul had, his, Peter had his mission to the Jewish people. Paul had his mission to the Gentiles. That is what is going on in this chapter of Galatians. And that's what we find in life, right? That some people have a calling to this type of thing. Some people have a calling to this type of thing. Some people have a calling here. And as long as they're all within the realm of what Jesus wants us to be doing in our world, we can all be called to many different things within following Christ. If you are a Jesus follower, your life will probably not look the same way as the person sitting uh, near you in the chairs is. If we're all Jesus followers here, let's, let's say that we're all following Jesus here. My guess is there are many of us that are living out the way of Jesus in a different way than those next to us. Yes, Jay, even you and your brother, you're probably going to live it out different ways. And that's good, right? You like that? Good. That's how it's supposed to be because all of us have a different mission from God. All of us have unique skills, a uh, unique personality, different characteristics, different abilities, different gifts from God that God has given each and every one of us. What Paul and Peter are jointly saying here in Galatians chapter 2, neither of their missions were superior to each other. 
it's not that Peter really was doing what Jesus wanted, what God wanted, and Paul was kind of an afterthought. Or sometimes we think, well, Paul was really spreading the gospel out to the Gentiles, to the rest of us. Peter, you know, he's doing that fine thing over there. No, neither one of those is any less good. They are all Jesus-honoring, God-honoring. It is the same way with us now. God has a mission for each of us. That, that mission may take us across the globe. That mission may take us across the city. That may, mission may take us across the yard to our neighbor. I, I don't know what that mission is. That mission may be you in your home doing something that God is calling to you to in your home, in your place where you live. But God has a mission for each of us. And today, I want to explore that a little bit more. Uh, we're, we're going to hear from a couple of different places where God's mission is being lived out by people this morning, uh, where, where God's mission is underway. And so, Pat, I want to invite you to come first. Pat is going to share a little bit about MCC, or Mennonite Central Committee, this organization that does good work, and I'm not going to share anymore because you can, and you can share about it very well because you've been connected to them for a long time. Yes, MCC. Okay. <laughs> uh, MCC helps people, needy people around the world, and they have many different projects. And uh, what we had... Uh, Yesterday and the day before was we had the Kansas MCC sale, and it's uh, raised about half a million dollars or maybe a little more. Yeah, yeah uh, that's something worth celebrating. Yeah. <laughs> and people from our church that contributed to this is uh, Roberta Foth, Julie Casper, Hirschberger's us, and probably other people too. And a lot more of you contributed too because the My Coins Count offering goes to that. So thank you to all of those contributed and those of you that picked that offering up. Uh, I think it's an example how a lot of people doing a little bit can all work together to do great things together. Um, I, and, and I think our church contributed several thousand to that amount. Uh, we're going to next see a video from Mennonite Central Committee, and it's in the same region that Hebert's are working at. It's, there are many different things that MCC does. They uh, help people farm better. They uh, contribute refugee buckets to people who are refu have refugees and school kits to kids that are going to school and all kinds of things. So uh, I think we're ready for it. Yeah, we're going to play that in just a second. For our friends that are joining us online, we don't have access to this video for you, so I'm going to put you on a screen with nice clouds that says we'll be back in about four minutes. But uh, Caitlin is putting the link to the video in the chat for our online friends, so if you want to watch it, you can participate there. Uh, but let's see, there we There we go.
you've got questions about what MCC does, Pat is very well connected, and so you can connect with them. This is one of the things MCC does, and their, their goal is that this, this village has been flooded. This village has been flooded, and it seems to be happening frequently, and so how can we, in Jesus' name, help these people? That is, that is what that video is suggesting. That, that's the mission that MCC has. There's another group that we are connected to. It's called MB Foundation. And Mr. Andy Shuey is here. He's here. He's going to give us a training for our elders later today from MB Foundation. But uh, come on up. Yeah, okay. come, come speak up here. And Andy, what would you tell us about MB Foundation? First of all, MB, Mennonite Brethren, that's our denomination for those of us that don't know what that is, but Mennonite Brethren Foundation, can you explain what it is and give us greetings from the many people that we're connected to? Yeah. So in short, we are the stewardship ministry, a national ministry of the Mennonite Brethren family. And so that revolves around money. And so our mission is to help uh, folks and grow generous stewards uh, across the country and work with folks in various ways. So let me center my thoughts and words for you. Uh, three words I want to want you to hear from me. Greetings, gratitude, um, and impact. So it's interesting to talk about mission, how you do mission together, but then sometimes there's uh, these connections that leave and then reconnect. So let me reconnect in a couple ways. I bring you greetings from John Wiebe, our president and CEO, but then also from two other folks who are on staff with us that many of you know. Uh, so I bring you greetings from Bruce Jost, who grew up here. He is our uh, chief development officer and then also greetings from Rick Eshbaugh, uh, one of your former pastors, who is our director of financial discipleship. Also bring you greetings from uh, my wife. Uh, my wife, Carrie, is the daughter of Dean and Joyce Langhofer, who were longtime members here. And so uh, as we were talking about me coming, Carrie uh, had a lot of memories come back, uh, particularly of the facility on Fairlawn, but time in the youth group. And she talked about how she really remembers how so many parents, uh, her parents, but also uh, friends of parents who poured into uh, particularly junior, junior and uh, high school youth group uh, from sponsors to parents driving um, them to church camp, as well as a couple of service uh, trips that they took. She vividly remembers Chicago and going to Biloxi, Mississippi. And you talked about the verse about um, remembering the poor. She particularly remembered that they, in Biloxi, worked in an uh, economically challenged area and working at a food bank uh, and clothing center. And one of the on-site leaders who impressed upon her just the statement, uh, we need to help them with their physical needs before we can minister to their spiritual needs. And that has hung with her for 40 plus years. Um, so also want to uh, uh, bring you a word of uh, gratitude and thanks from MB Foundation. Uh, for your partnership in ministry and how we together are impacting ministry. So one of those ways is that um, you as a church and a number of you as individuals are invested in our investment certificates. Oh, sorry, Ken and Ann, I see you, and Carrie mentioned you this morning as I was walking out the door to send you greetings, so hello from Carrie. Now, where was I? <laughs> sorry, you get distracted too, curveballs all the time, right? Um, yeah. So you as a church and a number of you as individuals are invested in our investment certificates, which gives us money that we then turn around and loan to churches and other ministries to either build, buy, or remodel a church facility or other ministry facilities, much like you all did in borrowing money from the Foundation Absolutely. to build this facility. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then a second way is in the area of charitable giving. One of our key roles is to help facilitate uh, charitable gifts, both during people's lifetime uh, as well as when they pass away uh, through their estate. And a couple of you have giving plans uh, set up through the foundation to do that. And uh, so uh, we'll work with folks can set up, uh, obviously you can give cash and you give to the church the way you do, but we have some people who will make gifts, uh, set up a special giving plan with gifts of stock or real estate or from their IRAs. Um, and then coordinate those gifts going to places like MCC and the church and other ministries that they love. Well, we are very excited to report as we have just now kind of closed the books on 2023. It was a record year for us in helping facilitate gifts on 
your behalf as well as others. We distribute over $16 million in a record year to over 477 different charities from MCC, the local church, and you name it. So I'm here to um, yeah, report in that way, but also thank you for being on mission, and particularly as you invest uh, in your youth and those who may not fall in the youth category as well as you disciple and impact ministry both here and around the world in the ways that you are. Thank you. Well, thanks, Sandy. It, real quick, is there one way that we, that people can connect with MB Foundation? Is there one thing you would tell them if you're interested in using your money as a way to help other groups? Is, are those investment certificates the best way? And how would people go about uh, connecting with you? Yeah, so really kind of the two, two I highlighted. So the investment certificates, if you uh, want to put money on deposit to earn a competitive return and help churches build churches, that's a way to do that. You can go online and find the ability to connect uh, that way, or you can certainly call our office. I'm somebody who works with people to help them do that. Uh, there's others too, but um, it, it's very simple, um, uh, whether you're an online person or a, a people person to do that. And the other is simply, uh, yeah, if there's something special in your situation um, that you want to think about ways to give, uh, we have uh, what's called a donor advised fund where you can put funds into it, uh, whether it comes from cash, stocks, IRAs, uh, real estate, uh, to then make gifts uh, at your discretion to where you want it to go, from the church to uh, people around the mission field um, to yeah. whatever uh, God has laid on your heart. Beautiful. Thanks, Andy. Can, can we celebrate uh, Andy and the MB Foundation here? We, our whole selves are invited to mission. Sometimes we separate, you know, our finances from the rest of us. We say, well, yeah, I'll, I'll go support a mission or I'll go on a mission trip or I'll do something, but, but we separate our finances. And MB Foundation is a great way to even use, for those of us that can invest, to to do something that is meaningful with our finances. And so if you have questions, connect with Andy. Uh, that's another way of being on mission. Uh, our last person, that, our last people that I'd like to highlight are Jesse and Copley. So Jesse and Copley, would you guys come up here? And I'm going to get off the stage uh, because I want you guys uh, to, to just be able to do what you'd like. And I see you've got some other friends coming too. Fantastic. Would you share with us? So Jesse... First of all, you are from this church, and Copley, we have met you uh, a couple of years ago and have enjoyed getting to know you as you two have connected, but also you've connected on mission. And so I'm just going to turn it over to you. I'm going to sit down in the front row and listen. Can you share with us what you have been doing and what God has been up to in your lives? All right. So Wadi Cop, <laughs> good to see everybody this morning. Um, so if you're a guy, to say hello in Thai, you say so what cop? And if you're a girl, you say, So what ka? So what ka? And, and the Thai girls will really hold out their ah. So it's like, So what ka? <laughs> it's pretty fun. So let's try it. All the ladies say, So what ka? And guys, let's say, So what cop? Great job. You guys are ready. That's all we know. <laughs> so, um, so, yes, we're the Heberts. I'm Jesse. This is my wife, Copley. If you're new to the church or haven't seen me before, I used to go here when I was um, small all the way till college. Then I headed to Arkansas, and I met this beautiful lady, um, and we got married in 2022. Um, and then a few months after that, decided to um, spend a year. We had a year-long commitment with an organization called Earth Mission. They are based in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Um, Thailand is in Southeast Asia, yep. So where she put the, Earth, the new Earth Mission logo that she's been implementing um, is where Chiang Mai is. That's a city. It's about 2 million people. It's in the mountains. Um, and that's where we lived. The work was actually done in, in some in Thailand and some in Myanmar. So we were working with a people group called the Karin. Um, I know it's spelled... Oh, Oh my goodness! <laughs> and it sounds. It looks like it'd be pronounced Karen, but it's. There's just they use an, another alphabet, right? So, when we bring it into 
our alphabet. That's how they decided to spell it whenever they did that. So that pronounced Karin people. Um, and they are um, subsistence farmers who live in the jungle. Um, so. Yeah, they're located primarily in eastern Myanmar and western Thailand. And our outfits are traditional Karin clothing today, handmade by some of our friends and gifts from them. Yep. Um, so there, there's nothing formal here. What we're going to do is show a bunch of pictures because <laughs> it's fun to look at pictures. And then we'll just talk a little bit about each picture. I'll try not to keep you guys too long. And then at the end or even in the beginning, through, throughout the <laughs> presentation, if anybody has a question, just raise your hand and we will call on you. And then whoever asks a question gets to come up to the table and grab a souvenir. So be ready for that. So we're just going to go through some pictures here. This was us leaving Kansas City. Oh, <laughs> and that was our first week in Thailand. Um, so it's a new country, right? And my body was not used to that. <laughs> so I actually got a, like a bacterial bug infection thing and I had to go to the hospital for a few days so that's our office so we worked in an office for the first we were there for 14 months we worked in the office for the first 12 months then we spent a month actually at the clinic that we operate helping and getting to work with the people who we were helping all year so so this was where we spent our first 12 months of work yeah, so excited. Okay, this is fun. In one of the first um, weeks, we decided to cook lunch for the office. There's about 15 people working there, some Thai, some Korean, and some American. And I wanted to make them a Mennonite meal, so I made um, some beer rocks there. And I also made suibak, but it's not in the picture, I think. But it's okay. And then some deviled eggs and mashed potatoes. What's that? Is that Brussels sprouts? I think those are Brussels sprouts. So this is, this is food that we didn't have very often. Um, so it was fun to cook it. Usually the meals would be rice and some kind of meat. So We went to the Super Bowl. It, it's a 12 hour time difference. So it was at 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> But we won, so. <laughs> um, so we did a few touristy things in our first month or so. Um, here's me at a Wat. That's a Buddhist temple. Um, they're very ornate. They're usually gilded and shiny. And um, there's a lot of incense. And yeah, we, we could talk a little bit more about Buddhism. I'll let Copley talk for a while. Um, so what I wanted to point out is that this today, actually, this week is the Thai and Burmese New Year. In Thailand, it's called Songkran, and in Burma, it's called um, Thingjin. And in order to celebrate the New Year, there's a huge water fight in the streets. Everyone throws water on each other to kind of represent washing away the old year and bringing in the new year. Um, but in both of those countries, that has a like comes from the Buddhist tradition. Um, and so we enjoyed the water fight, um, but also spent a lot of time kind of considering and praying for our neighbors and our friends as we considered that their hope is so limited in that. Um, and then the other picture here is me enjoying boba. Um, that's actually, I guess, a Vietnamese snack, but it's all throughout Asia. It's a little tapioca pearl. They've made it over here a little bit um, in like a milk tea. And Thailand is very cheap, so I got to enjoy that for about 75 cents, and that was really fun. Um, here's another temple. And our favorite mechanic, we got to spend a lot of time with him. <laughs> um, we were really thankful to find a reliable mechanic um, because we had some car issues, but he helped us get back on track. So just a quick side note. Um, the, the cost of living is a lot cheaper over there. So actually, for, for the people who know cars, he took apart my engine he ground down my like head, rebuilt everything, and put new um, head gasket on and all that. 
and he charged me like $300 in labor. <laughs> it took him a week. <laughs> so that's something we're going to miss being back here if we ever have car trouble. Yeah, so one of the first opportunities that we got to connect with the Thai culture, so being a multicultural organization, um, we got to serve Thai people and also people in Myanmar, um, was we ha hosted a football tournament um, with some local students, and we had a great time connecting with them, um, playing with them. Jesse played a little more than I did, um, but it was super fun to connect with them and eat ice cream with them. We also visited the zoo and saw an elephant. <laughs> Um, so about the beginning of April, we finally got to settle into teaching, which was one of our main roles, especially Jesse's teaching engineering. Um, so these are students who are Karen. They've grown up in Myanmar in the jungle. Um, and they have enrolled in our organization's engineering program in order to help their communities with infrastructure. So there's not a lot of education. Um, there's a really limited um, access to knowledge. Um, and so they've enrolled in our program to learn and to serve and to give back as soon as they've learned what they have access to. So here's Jesse teaching. Um, there's their new tool shed. They were very proud. Um, just an, a funny note on names. So uh, something that, that the Korean do that is really cool is they name people words. So Copley's name isn't a word, right? It, doesn't mean, well, maybe it meant something back in the day, but now she's just Copley. But so the guy standing next to me there is named Wado, which means big white. <laughs> I'm not really sure why. And then the one on the right is named Potwe, which means little sibling, and he's the youngest of seven. So it's kind of fun. <laughs> oh, did you come to this front and get it? No. <laughs> so um, these guys are in their early 20s. Um, yep. We built that, that thing to organize the tools. It didn't stay organized for very long. <laughs> oh my goodness. So we tried to teach them how to use a computer. <laughs> but it was one of the funniest days of my life. Because it's like, they're really slow. and You just don't think about things that are intuitive to us being in such a technological culture. They've lived in a culture where all they need is bamboo and water and their farm. And so trying to get them to search Google for a picture of a turtle was more challenging than you would expect. We also got to go swimming with them. Um, you'll notice if you look closely, they're all wearing like pants and shirts, just full clothes. That's their preferred swim gear. Um, we also went on some hikes and just really enjoyed building relationships with the students. So that is the primary goal of Earth Mission, is investing in next generation. So they, um, they do a physician's associate program and an engineering tech program. So we, w our goal is to be a sustainable. So after the organization's gone, there's still hundreds of PAs um, in an area with very little health care. So we also, there's a hospital that we spent time at, but the goal of the organization is not necessarily healthcare, it's training, but th they come together, so. <laughs> this is Songkran last year. Okay, these are just a couple of classic Thai foods, two of my favorites. The one on the left is called Pad Pak Rum. It is rice, there's white rice hanging under there with a fried vegetable, stir-fried vegetable and an egg on top. And the one on the right is called Khao Soi, and it's a spicy noodle with a chicken leg inside, um, as well as some like vinegary toppings. Oh, and this is another, this is a fruit, it's called a mango steen. I had never heard of this before going to Asia. Um, it is a really sweet, it kind of looks like garlic, but I promise it tastes like fruit. <laughs> it's delicious. Um, this was just a snapshot. We got the chance to visit the beach in Thailand for our anniversary. So again, cost of living thing. You could find a five-star resort for like 30 bucks a night. <laughs> it wasn't as, maybe as nice. I've never been to one in the US, but. <laughs> um, so we, we went to Krabi, Thailand for our anniversary. Uh, we played headbands to practice English. I don't know if you guys have played that, but it's fun. 
And here I am teaching at a local Thai school, um, which is just as chaotic as you can possibly imagine. There's like 40 of them, and all the way from maybe first grade to sixth grade, boys and girls. And they speak very little English, so if you're trying to corral them, yes, question. Yeah, those are. So those are lanterns from the Loy Kratong Festival, which is another Buddhist festival. Um, and they leave them up for a long time. You should come get. You got it. You earned it. Um, so that was what must have been around that festival. The lanterns were still there. Yeah, and you'll see those at a lot of Buddhist temples throughout Asia. Solar power is important. There's no power grid or power plants, so that is the primary way. You can use a diesel generator. Uh, just you have to get the diesel there, and it's very bumpy <laughs> and super long trip. So, just with the students again. Um, maybe Hong Kong. <laughs> All of the big cities kind of look the same, but yeah. We got to go to Hong Kong. Um, so, something that's cool about living overseas is that you are close to a whole new category of city. So Hong Kong was a weekend trip, you know? It's like a three hour flight from Chiang Mai, so. Uh, yeah, it, it was rainy season, so that's why everything was cheap. <laughs> Okay, so this is one of my favorite pictures. This, it's not a great picture because it's through a car window. This is a very classic Thailand site. Um, they have these trucks and this is their primary way of transporting anything, is in just a classic, actually pretty small truck by American standards, just stacked as high as you can possibly imagine. This is actually not a very tall one compared to some others that we saw, but that's a very classic Thai road site. So on the left here, this is us saying goodbye to some of our closest friends in Thailand. And then on the right, we got to say hello that same week to our friends and family from Kansas. It was so fun to have them visit. Just family. They're also friends. Um, we got to take them to a Thai school and show them kind of what we were teaching and how the English was going. Um, they got to enjoy the chaos. <laughs> and we went shrimping with them. That's a fun Thai pastime. You have a pool inside a building that they stock with shrimp and you have to try to catch them. You compete to see who can get the most. It's very fun. Yeah, and then you eat them. You get to take them home. Um, we also went to uh, Sticky Waterfalls. There's lots of beautiful waterfalls in Thailand. And this one is called Sticky Falls because something about the deposits of the water means you can actually walk up it safely. It's not slippery at all. It feels sticky under your feet. So that's kind of fun. And then we went to Bangkok. We played mini golf, yeah. Um, so here's us teaching at the school again. We did this a lot. We had a lot of fun building relationships with those students and um, practicing the alphabet. Um, these are some of our closest friends in Thailand as well. They shared popsicles with us. So this is our team at the office. Um, you can see there's a wide mix of cultures represented heights. and heights, yes. <laughs> um, but we really, really grew to love these people and they took such good care of us. Um, as we were adjusting to a new culture and, um, yeah, just a really great group of people. Um, some ramen and another picture of us at the office. Okay, so we got to host, another Thai connection point was we got to host cooking classes, um, cooking competitions, excuse me, at the office about monthly. Um, so members of the community would come in and cook traditional foods, and then we would taste them and judge them. And... Well, favorite is a stretch, but the most memorable was definitely frog soup. Tom yum gob. Tom yum gob. It's the noise that a frog makes. Gob gob. I don't know. Yeah, so we also got to do lots of um, outreach programs with our organization. So this is us like giving diapers to a nearby school that needed them. The office. We spent a lot of time there. Um, Lots of koi fish everywhere in Thailand. This is outside our apartment. Here's me at work, and also me with a street dog. There's street dogs everywhere in Thailand. Um, this is a pretty classic Run view of a regular day. Them, but sometimes they're so cute, you just can't help it. 
Oh, we have a question. Um, just in Thailand in general. Um, they have English in the schools all the way from primary schools. Um, unfortunately, their English teachers are usually English as their second or third language, and that's not their primary goal. Um, so they start learning in primary school, um, but they really have to kind of choose to pursue that if they want to make that a thing. Right, right. So it's not, many are not fluent um, unless they go on to pursue that in college. Yeah. Yes? Well, they're street dogs, meaning they just live on the street all the time, and they're not, they don't have typical vet care like we might uh, hope for. <laughs> so you never know what they might be carrying. Yeah. Yes? How many students? So in the schools, the ones that we're teaching English at, there's about 60 students usually each time. It kind of depends on the week. And then in our programs with our organization, so the engineering tech students, there's about 10 of them right now total from all the years. And then the PA students, there's about 12 each year, so about 60. Good question. I got a haircut. I got a haircut. We built a little house there to practice our engineering and construction skills. That team with the CFC shirts is from Ireland. So you can imagine our students with a limited grasp of English had a hard time with like, oh, get that wee little hammer for me <laughs> kind of thing. So <laughs> it was very muddy football game, but and I lost, I'm still mad. <laughs> There's our house. Can't use wood because it rots, so we use bricks. Shanghai, uh, that is Beijing. We got to see the Great Wall of China, so super exciting. We also, so we took one one trip, one big trip where we went to several countries, and this is us at Hiroshima. Um, that is, that building was within, yeah, within a few hundred yards of the atomic bomb that was dropped there. A question from Caitlin. <laughs> How do they see God moving within Earth Mission, and are there ways we can pray for and partner with them? Yep, good question. You'll have to get a souvenir for her and bring it back. So the... Um, Korean people are actually um, like mostly Christian, historically Christian. Um, so there was a guy named Adoniram Judson who came around in, I believe, the 18, late 1800s and was the first um, Western person to visit that area, and he was a Christian, and he translated the Bible. It's called the Judson Translation, and they still use it <laughs> into Burmese. So... Um, the Corinne, we learned a lot from the Corinne about faith and um, patience and lots of stuff. But um, as far as how God is moving, um, yeah, just we can just pray for m more um, courage and ability for our staff to uh, minister to the people that they're serving, whether that's like physically with healthcare or um, spiritually, just talking to them, talking to them and telling them about Jesus. They're, the opportunities are definitely there because there's a lot of need and there is a lot of brokenness and a lot of ways that Jesus. I mean, of course, Jesus can always help, but it, it's evident that that Jesus is needed in this part of the world, right? You can't really coast by and be like, it's all good because there's. Uh, I can't talk about it too much, but there's a lot of violence in that area. So, um, yeah, definitely, we need Jesus for peace. There's a question over here. Okay, so the question was, what sort of thing do we teach for engineering tech? I'm going to let Jesse answer that. Yeah, so it's a combination of things. Um, we do construction, like you saw that building. 
and we do electrical. So that's like, how do you wire a building? Um, but it also gets pretty complicated because what if your air conditioner breaks during surgery? You need to know how to patch together a solution or, yeah, yeah. So a lot of problem solving. And then you have to understand solar systems. Yeah, and mechanics is a big part of it because we have several trucks. The organization has several trucks and they're constantly breaking because to get to the closest um, supply of like store that we can buy stuff is a six hour drive over very bumpy terrain, so. Um, we, we are fast approaching noon. It's like two minutes away and we would love to stay here and, and listen the whole time. I, I warned us it was a PAX Sunday, right? Uh, I don't want to interrupt. Is there one more question that, that somebody, Catherine? Yes, people do adopt the street dogs. Often they get taken home. There's a lot of paperwork, but there's probably several living in Kansas right now. <laughs> would, would you sum up Earth Mission and your time and time? It's an impossible question, I know, but, but could you sum it up for us? And yeah. It, um, that is an impossible question. I think for us, the capstone really was, the, the highlight was the time that we got to spend in the jungle with our friends. Um, these people are incredibly hardworking and incredibly courageous and incredibly joyful um, and just really compelling, um, the great need that we got to see there. Um, I'm really, really thankful that we got to spend so much time um, serving them and learning from them and I'm hopeful that the Lord continues to just work in their hearts as well as in their practical needs. Yeah, yeah we trust you will. Jesse, anything to add? Um, make sure you come up and get some souvenirs because <laughs> we, don't, we don't need them. So. <laughs> and we want to share them with you guys, so that's all. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it was, it was really awesome for Copley and I to get an understanding of the difficulties of living in another country and um, the context for a lot of people there. So I think moving forward, we want to try and help get, get connected with either the Korean or other um, immigrants who are living in the US, so. That's awesome, thank you guys. Can, can we celebrate the work that Jesse and Copley have done over the last 14 months? And I'm going to invite us, we're going to pray over them, so if you would like to extend your hand, this is a prayer of thanks, because we, we know, know you are here, and we prayed over you as you went, and we, we want to pray over you guys as you are here. So if you'd just extend your hands, we're going to pray over you guys, and uh, just say thank you. God, thank you. Thank you for the good work that, that Jesse and Copley have done over these last 14 months, for connecting with people, for training people, for being on mission for you. We are grateful. And we want to be people on mission for you. We recognize we can be on mission for you in Thailand. We recognize we can be on mission for you at the rescue mission helping there. We recognize we can be on mission for you as we go about our daily lives. And so wherever we go, Lord, we pray that you would help us be on mission for you, that you'd help us be people living out your good news, the good news of, of Jesus. God, we pray specifically for the Karen people that your goodness and peace would reign, that you'd keep them connecting with you, that the people that are still working for Earth Mission would be doing good works. And for Jesse and Copley, as they, uh, as they connect here in the States, as they live uh, in Lawrence, as they do the things that you are calling them to, that you would move in and through them, that just because they have returned from the mission field does not mean they are off mission, that they can still be people living out your gospel goodness, your gospel truth, Lord. Be with us and go with us from here in Jesus' name. Amen. And I just want to make sure I say thank you all for the support that you gave us, the prayers, the financial support, even the VBS connection. We really, really felt encouraged and deeply appreciated your support. So thank you. Absolutely. Well, hey, friends, let, let's stand up. And uh, Mr. Nathan, could you get us to the doxology slide? We're just going to stand, we're going to sing the doxology. Do you guys know the doxology? You, you can...
Sing it with us. You do, right? Wonderful. Would, would one of you want to lead us in it? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Blessings to you, friends. Connect with Jesse and Copley uh, after the service if you want to hear more. And go on mission. Go in peace.